So let me give you a seven step goal setting process that you can use. And then I'm going to give you uh, a simple exercise that you can take home and do uh, when you get home that will make this in a great year. Here are the seven steps to goal setting. First of all, decide exactly what you want. Now the rule is that you need three types of goals. All right, you need business and career goals because we have to make a living and pay the bills. Also, you need personal and family goals. You need personal and family goals because these are the most important things that we do. And number three is you need self-improvement goals. Whatever got you to where you are today is not enough to get you any further. You can't get any further in life today with your current level of knowledge and skill. Your business and career goals are the what that, are the what that you want. Your family and personal goals are the how, are the why you're doing what you're doing. And your self-improvement goals are the how. So decide exactly what you want and that's the starting point and make sure you have a balanced set of goals. You can work on 10 to 15 goals at a time, but as we say in a minute, you have to have one major goal. Number two is write it down. Write it down, make it specific, and set a deadline. Uh, having a goal without a deadline is like sewing without out a knot in the end of the thread. Your life just goes around in circles. So you have to decide exactly what you want. You have to write it down clearly and set a deadline. I always, when I write my goals, I write buy. I achieve such and such buy. I sell such and such buy. I accumulate so much money buy. I weigh so and so many pounds buy. So that what that does, it tells your subconscious and your superconscious mind that there's a use by date on your goal, that there's a time frame. And psychologists say that a programmed date acts like a forcing system. It impels you unconsciously to move toward the goal. And by the law of attraction, it begins to attract the goal into your life. And things start to move. There's a law called the law of accelerating acceleration that says when you start toward your goal, when you start toward your goal, your goal starts toward you. And it starts to move toward you at a rapid rate. And the faster you move toward your goal, the faster the goal moves toward you. And that's where very often you'll achieve your goal and you'll find out that a whole bunch of other things have been going on that made it possible. So the law of accelerating acceleration says the greater clarity you have with regard to the goal, the faster you move toward it and the faster it moves toward you. Which brings us to number three is identify the obstacles you will have to overcome to achieve your goal. Now between you and your goal, between you and their, your goal, there will always be obstacles. The difference between success and achievement, by the way, is success means you get what you want, but achievement means you overcome obstacles to achieve a goal. Someone asked me recently on a radio show, what's the difference between a goal and an activity like making sales calls? Well, a goal is something where there's adversity and difficulty and challenge and a possibility of failure. Making sales calls is merely an activity. You can just do it or not do it. Having lunch is not a goal. You know, going for a walk is not a goal, it's an activity. But a goal is something that's big, measurable, important, that can have an effect on your life. So identify the obstacles. And what we know is that here, here is you, and between you and anything you want, imagine there's a road, and here's your goal. And on the road, there are detours, and there are, uh, you know, construction and, and side tracks and so on, but there's always one rock that has fallen off the mountain onto your goal. So the question is, what is your rock? What is the major obstacle that stands between you and the achievement of your goal? And what we know in the answer to this question is the 80-20 rule that says that 80% of your rocks, your big obstacles, are within yourself. They are within your own knowledge, your own skill, and within your own qualities. Someone was asking me earlier about self-discipline. Does everybody here feel they need a little bit more self-discipline? Say yes. Yeah. All good people, even the most highly disciplined people, feel their self-discipline sucks. It's interesting. People that don't think about it have no future at all. Uh, I can tell you that. But we all, the reason you're successful is because of your level of self-discipline, but we all have the nagging feeling that we need more. And you're right. <laughs> we, we need more and we can never slack off. It's like working out with muscles and you stop working out with them for any period of time they start to get sloppy again. You just have to keep working self-discipline all the time. You never get it down perfect. So 80% of all of your rocks 
the obstacles that hold you back are within yourself. Only 20% are external. So remember we said earlier, the question is, what is it in me? If you're not achieving a goal, say, what is it in me? What quality, skill, ability, attribute am I lacking? Uh, and then go to work on yourself. And very often that's where you'll find the problem. Now, number four step in setting goals is identify the additional knowledge and skills you will require. As Les Brown would say, to achieve something you've never achieved before, you have to become someone you've never been before. You have to learn something you've never learned before. You have to apply something you've never applied before. Identify the additional knowledge and skills you will require. Now, here is our discovery, and it's this, is that there's usually one skill that is your rock. It's your major constraint on your success. And the way you discover your one skill is you ask yourself this magic question. This, by the way, is a life-changing, double your income, transform your future question. One of the best I've ever learned. You say, what one skill, what one skill, if I was excellent at it, would help me the most? You could say, would help me the most to achieve my major goal, would help me the most to double my income, would help me the most to achieve financial independence. Which one skill would help you the most? And when you ask this question, the answer will pop into your mind. And almost invariably, it is a skill that you don't like. It's prospecting, it's closing, it's telephoning, it's something that you don't like to do. Now, why is it that we feel uncomfortable with a particular skill? or in a particular skill area. Why? Because we're not good at it yet. We're just not good at it yet, that's all. And however, the good news is that it's a learnable skill. So here's the two rules, which I've shared with you in the past. Rule number one is that any skill is learnable. All business skills, all sales skills, all money-making skills are learnable skills. Everyone who has them today at one time did not have them at all and learned them. Everyone who has them today was once uncomfortable and nervous and embarrassed and frustrated with them and has now mastered them. So all skills are learnable. Now here is the tragedy. Imagine that you are meant to earn two or three or five times what you're earning today and you're only one skill away from doing it. Imagine, and many people go through their whole lives worrying about money when they're one skill away from being at the top of their field. If they were too lazy or too afraid because of learned helplessness, I can't do that, or the comfort zone, Oh, I'm doing all right. And because of those two, they never learned the skill necessary to blast them to the top. When you start to win, when you start to get incredible results in life because of your new skills, the difference is phenomenal. And if it takes you a week, a month, a year to learn the skill, the payoff is so great, you forget instantly all the work of learning the skill. So don't let yourself be held back because of a missing skill. So the first rule is you're only one... That is, is that is that all skills necessary for success are learnable. The second rule is you are probably only one skill away from doubling your income right now, and you know what that skill is. Don't let that skill hold you back because of learned helplessness or because of anything that's happened in the past. If other people can master that skill, so can you. Is that right? Say yes. Yes. Very important. And if you wonder if you can master the skill, just repeat the words, I can do it. Number five is identify the people whose help, identify the people whose help and cooperation, identify hmm, the people whose help and cooperation you'll require. You'll need the help and cooperation of your family if you're going to accomplish big goals. You'll need the help and cooperation of your boss. You'll need the help and cooperation of your customers and your bankers and your friends. You need the help and cooperation of lots of people, but identify the people who's help, and then ask yourself this question, what's in it for them? W-I-I-F them. And always start off by saying, what will I give them in order to get their support and cooperation? The average person who accomplishes very little always thinks in terms of how they can get something out of someone else. The top person thinks how they can give something to someone else to get them to want to help them. So always go with the reasons why it's to somebody else's advantage to help you. And it's amazing how much people will support you if there's a reason for them. 
So who's, who's people, and of all these people, who's the most important person? Who's the most important person in your world whose help you will require in order to be successful? Is it your boss? Is it your major customer? Is it your banker? Is it your spouse? Interesting, there's, there, there's an enormous amount of talk, which I think consider, consider pablum talk, about how you always have to keep your life in balance all the time. Well, it's simply not true, because there are times in your life where you're going to have to work your head off in order to break out of the pack. Like the beginning of a marathon, with all those runners, you're going to have to run faster to get ahead. And so you're going to have to go to what is called a deliberate extreme. A deliberate extreme is where you're going to have to work far more days and hours than is normal in order for you to get a new business started, a new career started, a new product or service launched or something else. If you're going to have to go through a deliberate extreme, then sit down with your spouse, your kids and so on and tell them, this is what I'm going to have to do in order to take full advantage of this opportunity. But if you'll bear with me, I'll make it up to you. And we find one of the primary reasons for negative emotions is frustrated expectations. In life, if what you will do is you will explain to people what's going on before they become angry and upset, if you will then tell them so that their expectations are consistent with reality, you'll eliminate most of your problems. Number uh, six is make a plan. Make a plan. And plans are very simple because what you do is you just make a list. You start off with a list of everything you'll have to do. You've already identified it. You know what the goal is. You've broken the goal down into sub-deadlines. You've identified the knowledge you'll require, the obstacles you'll have to go the people overcome, the people whose cooperation you'll require. Make a list of everything you'll have to do and then organize the list, first of all, by sequence. Which, what, which means what comes first? What do you have to do before you do something else? And then second of all, by priority, which is what is more important and what is less important. And once you have a list organized by sequence and priority, you have a plan. Now you have the two great requirements for winning. You have a goal and a plan. Now, does it take a little while to do this? Yes. But once you have the goal and the plan, the very act of completing them programs them into your subconscious mind. We, in our advanced coaching programs, we teach people to write down and, and create goals and plans. And then once they've done it all, 90 days later they come back, I say, how many of you reviewed your goals and plans in the last 90 days? Most of them didn't do it. How many of you achieved your goals and plans? All of them. But the most amazing darn thing, because by writing them out, they've programmed them into their subconscious mind, which passes it off like a baton to the superconscious, which then works 24 hours a day to bring it into their lives. And the most remarkable coincidences occur. Things start to happen. The phone rings. People sit down next to you socially and give you advice. Your boss gives you opportunities. Doors open. You get intuitions and insights. The most phenomenal things because you've programmed yourself with a goal and a plan. That's why people with goals and plans, according to the best research, accomplish 10 times as much as people without goals and plans a thousand percent more than people without. So write down what you want and make it clear so that the universe can help you get it. Emmett Fox, who I mentioned before, wrote a book many years ago called The Mental Equivalent. Actually, it wasn't even a book, it was a pamphlet. And this little pamphlet is one of the most profound pieces of writing in history. It's just unbelievable. I'd read Emmett Fox for years and someone came up to me and said, have you ever read The Mental Equivalent? I said, no, I've read all of his books. Well, it's not that easy to get, so I got it. And what it does is it basically says is you have one responsibility to your universe, is that is to create within your mind the mental equivalent of what you would like to see on the outside. If you will do that, all the mental laws that we've talked about and many more that we haven't had a chance to go into will all work. Just like click, 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 they'll all work, and what you want on, will appear on the outside by the law of <laughs> cause and effect, <laughs> belief, <laughs> expectation, attraction, correspondence, and so on. Your job is to give to the universe an absolutely crystal clear picture of the goal that you want, which you can only get by thinking it through and writing it down. So here's the exercise, and this is your homework exercise. Take a clean piece of paper <clears throat> when you get home, and this is the only test. This is a take-home test. This is a test to see how badly you really want to make next year a fabulous year. And so at the top of this page, write the word goals. Some of you have seen this before. I need to teach it to everybody, and you're going to write down 10 goals. 
And these goals, you, you can write more than 10 if you like, but you must write a minimum of 10. These goals are one-year goals, approximately. These are goals that you want to accomplish this year. Health, income, car, travel, fitness, and so on. You write them in the present tense as though a year has passed and you are reporting they've already been achieved. I drive such and such a car. I live in such and such a house. I weigh certain many pounds. I take <laughs> such and such a vacation. I spend, I write down, one of my goals is spend time with my family. The more often I write it down, repeatedly, the more time I spend with my family. If it's an important goal, then, and you don't write it down, what happens is it gets shuffled aside. You write it and make it positive. Not I will lose weight, but I am a non-smoke, uh, but I am a uh, way X number of pounds. Not I will quit smoking, but I am a non-smoker. So it's always a positive statement. And third of all, it's always personal. Every goal you ever write for the rest of your life begins with the word I, because you are the only person in the universe who can use the word I with regard to yourself, and you follow it with an action verb. I earn, I sell, I drive, I live in, I achieve, I accomplish, I acquire, I save. <laughs> But always make it I plus an action verb. That's the way the subconscious mind accepts instructions. When this instruction comes in like that, it's immediately passed on to the superconscious. I have taken people through this exercise all over the world once, and I come back a year or two years later, and they say the same words in every language. You won't believe what's happened to me. I wrote down those goals, and I never looked at them again. You won't believe what's happened to me. You won't believe it. I found those goals in something a year later, and you won't believe what's happened to me. I've accomplished all the goals. I couldn't, I never looked at it again. Because when you write down a goal, you activate three learning modalities. The visual, you can see it. The auditory, you sub-vocalize it, you say it to yourself. And the kinesthetic, you write it. All three together goes, and it goes straight into the subconscious mind. And it's passed a lot, like one of those vacuum tubes for messages in old stores, it goes boom, straight into the superconscious. And just go on with the rest of your life. And 24 hours a day, this great superconscious mind is working to bring the goal into your life. Okay, now you've got your list of goals. Here's my list right here. I do this all the time. Then you look at this list, and this is the kicker. You ask yourself, if you could wave a magic wand and achieve any one goal on this list. These are not your one-year goals. But imagine you could have a special dispensation and wave a magic wand, and you could have any one goal within 24 hours. Which one of these goals would have the greatest positive impact on your life? And you look at your list, and I can assure you that, that the, the right, answer, right answer will jump out at you. Usually it's a financial goal, because if you achieve a financial goal, it'll have an impact on everything else. But sometimes it's a health goal, sometimes it's a business goal, sometimes it's a relationship goal. I had a guy who came into my course, he had just been diagnosed with kidney disease. If he didn't get a kidney transplant, he was going to die. His previous session, his were all financial goals. Now, he needed a kidney. What do you think his number one goal was? Get a kidney. He wrote it down, made a plan, and you know, somehow, some miracle happened. He jumped a line of 29,000 other people, and they got a kidney because he had a special blood type, and there was a kidney available, and the other recipient was too far away, and all the universe conspired together, and he had his kidney. And people say, that's, that's impossible. Many people die on waiting lists for for organ transplants, he got his kidney. It was his major goal. That's all he thought about all the time, too. So, once you have this goal, now this becomes your major definite purpose. This becomes the organizing principle of your life. This becomes the goal that is going to change your life because now you begin to think about this goal all the time. When you get a chance, you sit down and you write this goal at the top of a page and you set a deadline for the goal. And then you identify um, all the obstacles you'll have to remove in order to achieve the goal, all of the knowledge and skill you'll require to achieve the goal, the people whose help that you'll require, you make a plan, you organize the plan, and you work on the plan every day. When you get up in the morning, you think about the goal. When you go through the day, you think about the goal. Whenever something gets you off track, you stop with it, you think about the goal. Because the goal is always inherently positive. When you think about the goal, you become happy. When you think about your goal, your self-esteem and your self-confidence goes up, and it's absolutely inevitable that you start to move toward the goal. And as you move toward the goal, you feel powerful. You feel like a winner. You feel like you're in control of your life and your self-confidence goes up and your self-esteem goes up. And as sure as God made little green apples, you will accomplish that goal. And when you accomplish that goal, you get this rush I was talking about that tells you, hey, I can do anything. I can do anything I put my mind to. 
And once you know you can do anything you put your mind to, your self-confidence will go through the roof. You'll set bigger goals, you put more zeros at the end of your goals, and you'll become unstoppable. So let me just wrap up by saying this. You have unlimited potential. You're living in the best country at the best time in all of human history. The possibilities for the future are the greatest that have ever existed for mankind right here in this country. There is nothing that you can't do if you put your mind to it. So go out there and kick some butt and take some names.